We also discuss that with monetary policy now in restrictive territory, we are closer to the point where it will be appropriate to pause interest rate increases to allow more time to assess the state of the economy. At what point it will be appropriate to pause will be determined by the data and by our assessment of the outlook. The Governor took questions from the audience after his speech and I had the chance to ask him about his abrupt change of tone. Governor Lowe, last month you were described as a hawk. This month you're being described as a dove. How can you change from one to the other so quickly? <laughs> well, I can't and I didn't. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the message uh, from the Reserve Bank really since May last year is inflation's too high, we need to keep raising interest rates, we're on a path to do that. Um, uh, in uh, February, we were faced with surprisingly strong um, underlying inflation and uh, our forecasts were prepared on the technical assumption that interest rates would get to three and three quarters, which required a couple of extra increases from where we were. So. Uh, the statement last month was drawing people's attention to that. And um, yesterday, was saying interest rates are still likely to go up further, but by when and how much you've got an open mind. So it's very consistent messaging, although the nuances do change from month to month, as they should, as the data changes. And uh, the media and the financial markets sometimes overinterpret. But the statement this words. month was very different to the statement last night. The amount of words were totally changed. It was, because we had, um, you know, this month was a kind of a, a bumper month for data. And for the first time ever, we had the national accounts, inflation, wages, and the labour force all in one month. And um, those data on balance were a bit softer than we had expected. And uh, it's appropriate that we, we modify our language as the data changes. We're very much in a data-dependent world, and when the data changes, we're going to change the language. But the, the underlying message has been the same. Inflation's too high, we need to keep raising rates, and we will. When and how much remains to be determined. Well, at that same conference today, the Grattan Institute Chief Executive, Danielle Wood, came out swinging, saying that moving interest rates is the best way to deal with inflation and not politics. I spoke with her earlier and asked whether, compared with the US Federal Reserve, there's an argument the RBA is going a bit soft right now. I, I think that's a hard argument to make, uh, given we've seen 10 consecutive rate rises. Uh, the it's not quite rate where the United in States history. Federal Reserve, though, is, is it, though? Uh, no, no, so we're not priced as high as many of those international markets, but I think there's reasons for that. Uh, and, and Philip Lowe today, I think, outlined those very clearly. We haven't seen the same wage pressures that they've seen in some of those markets. Uh, we have a much higher fraction of our home loan holders on variable rates, so you actually get a faster transmission of monetary policy into spending. Um, we are now seeing um, some of those impacts play out as, as spending softens. Uh, so I think, you know, overall the Reserve Bank has moved strongly, probably stronger than we would expect uh, any politician to be able to. Uh, and we are starting to see green shoots. I, I certainly don't want to call it, but, but green shoots that inflation pressures are coming down. OK, so let's go back to that other thing. So this is about an argument about maintaining the independence of the Reserve Bank. There's a review underway into the Reserve Bank the one thing I sense that you wouldn't want is any political interference in the, in the independence or the process of the Reserve Bank and its governance. No, I think that absolutely must remain sacrosanct. And the reason is, is that when we are in these periods and we are in a period where we need to take demand out of the economy, we've got too many dollars chasing too few goods and that's shooting up prices, we risk de-anchoring expectations and you end up in that world of the wage price spiral, which none of us want to go to because then you have to do some really nasty things to get inflation under control. Um, you need a body that can make those hard decisions. So you could do it by increasing taxes or reducing government spending, but whether governments would be but able to But that takes longer, enough, doesn't it, to play out? Exactly. And it's got to go through the political process exactly. and Senate committees. We know how long that takes. That's the reason why interest rates are the most effective tool, as I understand it, because they're fast. They right. affect demand immediately. They're fast, and by having that independence, uh, they can make those hard decisions. I mean, look at the backlash. It is Philip Lowe and the RBA is facing a lot of backlash for, for doing these hard things. And I understand why. People, people are hurting, uh, and it's just 
really difficult, I think, for politicians to inflict that. See, it's the, the funny thing is the backlash from me is that they're not going hard enough, right? The backlash isn't that they've gone. It's not that they're not going hard enough and they're not going to crush the inflation out because the risk is that inflation remains. And as even Philip Lowe himself says, that's a danger. If you don't get rid of this inflation, he's determined to get rid of it. I sense that. But I'm just wondering whether what they're doing, the softly, softly approach, is sending the right messages to the community, to business and to households. Uh, look, I, I think the community would disagree with you that it's been a softly, softly approach. As I said, we've been very strict. Ten rises in rates. Um, the Reserve Bank is trying to, you know, walk the narrow path that Phil Lowe talks about. So, absolutely, we need to bring it down. We don't want to entrench expectations. On the other hand, if they go too aggressively, you risk pushing the economy into recession, um, all the very human and economic costs that that entails. Oh, I